Well, good morning, gorgeous creature. <laughs> and good morning, <laughs> hello, and good evening, and good night to uh, everyone out there in podcast world and YouTube land and anyone who may be picking this up out there. Uh, I've got the beautiful Shakina Lee with me today and we've had a few technical difficulties this morning, but, you know, we just managed to just bring it together within five minutes. Perfect, perfect imperfection. Um, so I'm going to hand it quickly over to Shakina to... Well, we're going to get into some nuts and bolts, and I think we're just going to let it flow, as we said before, because sometimes they're the most juicy conversations. We just go on a flow and see what comes forth. But really, we want to know who you are and how you came about to do the work that you do. Okay. So, well, over to you. <laughs> Thanks. I'll just Where do back. I start? You sit back, you relax, you listen to the story. Um, like I was saying to you before, sometimes it's very hard to put everything that I do, you know, 40 decades of, of being me into a very succinct, short paragraph. But, you know, when I really think about where it all started, it was as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I was always passionate and I was always passionate about people's rights. Like it was always about fair, you know, fairness and justice and as soon as I could, I started volunteering at Women's Legal Service so I could help women who were, you know, fleeing with domestic violence and things like that. And I became the convener for the Women's Electoral Lobby so that I could help make, um, like, changes and policy changes and advocate, you know, advocate for women's choices. I always, I always remember, like, one of my first slogans was, my body, my choice. I should be able to do what I want with my life and my body. No one else should have a say. So yes. it was sparked way back then, way back then. So all of the work, you know, some people wonder why I predominantly work with women. And for me, it's because I am a woman in this mm -hmm. lifetime. It's the experience that I'm having. I am not a man and I haven't had a man's experience. I don't know all of the things they go through, but I do know what I've been through and I do know what I've experienced and I do know how I would like that to be different for other women and for my daughter and for the generations who are coming after me. And so I guess in a nutshell, all of my work comes from that place, the wanting to bring change into the world that allows other people to have a much more beautiful experience. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, with all that, how did you come in to do the work that you're doing now? Where did it start? Was it the, doing the Kahuna Massage or yes. how did it So yep. it did. It started with Kahuna Massage because I was w working in the corporate world. Like I left school before grade 12 and just went, I was like, no, nah, I need to earn money because we I grew up without much. So, you know, I just wanted that. I wanted to be out in the world, making a difference, earning money, having an impact. So I was working in the, in the corporate world in a printing company slowly you know soul destroying work <laughs> and then Stop. I started yes and then I started um you know people started coming into my life and they were doing women's work women's circles women's rights of passage stuff so I started dipping a toe in that because in the corporate world I was very much in my masculine mm -hmm. you know I had to be one of the boys to be taken seriously I couldn't be too emotional you know intuition isn't something you mentioned you know it was the very logical rational industry and also the job I was doing was um analysis numbers maths so yeah. you know it just yeah. dry it was so, yeah it was <laughs> really really dry and if mm. well you know me very well you can imagine how yeah. that yeah <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I had material. I had the material things I'd always wanted. I bought my own house. I had the security of those things that I mm -hmm. thought were most important. But I, I was dying on the inside, and so I'd gone to this women's weekend. And one of the things you could do after you've done your rites of passage experience was ask for something that you wanted. And the two people who were there, one who was facilitating, had done did Kahuna or Hawaiian massage, and I'd always wanted to try it. And so I asked for that. And so two, two ladies gave me a little 15-minute two-on-one kahuna experience and it blew my mind. Yeah. I just went, oh, my God, 
this is how I want to feel and this is how I want to help other people feel. So I quit my job and I went and studied how to do kahuna massage and I haven't looked back. And it was when I was um, doing my level three that I found out I was pregnant. And so, of course, that changed my whole life as well. Yes, as it does. Children as it into does. The world, um, did you, did you, would you say that it took you off your path a little bit or could you do the things at the same time, be a mum and... Yeah, it. you know when you change one thing in your life, everything changes? That's yeah. just what happened. I changed my career and then I was pregnant and so, you know, here I was thinking I'm going to go into this massage business but I couldn't massage with a belly out here <laughs> you know? yeah. um yeah. I was tired and then I had a baby so you know that first year especially because I was pretty much raising her on my own with very little support it was consumed by babiness I don't feel like I came out of that that tunnel I don't feel I saw the light at the end of that initial postnatal motherhood tunnel until she turned one and then all of a sudden I was like oh hang on I think there could be a me in here too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, isn't it? Yeah. It's like yeah. You're on the back burner for a while because you've got to, you know, you're a new mum and it's a totally new terrain and you've got to put all your energy to look after. And it's twenty four little... seven. It's twenty four seven oh. and it's completely oh. consuming. Yeah. And I'd never and I'll um you know, I've never being such a incredibly independent and solo person. I'd never had to spend, A, so much time with another human in my life <laughs> or, B, being a slave to another human because, really, you are, and it felt like that. Indeed. And so yeah. there was a lot of breaking down that happened for me in that first year around um, my self-identity and all of those things about being independent and solo and having my freedom, having alone time as an introvert. I like quiet alone time. I didn't get quite alone time. She did yeah. hardly slept, you yeah. know. She, she's a little saggy. She's noisy yeah. and wanted to be with you all the time. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it was yeah. just like, Wah! So, yeah, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of breaking down. And, you know, it was that experience of having a baby and the trauma that happened during the birth and then the postnatal depression and the postnatal um, stress that made me then move into doing like birth work, which was then the next thing that I Voila. did. Voila. And of course, Voila. you know, you can't help people unless you've experienced oh. that. And I feel like you know, most of the healers that are coming about, obviously, well, to be a good healer, you have to have gone through the trauma and experience and come out the other end before you can teach and heal, help heal help heal people yes so yeah. yeah i've had the experience with you i've had um kahuna massage and um the shamanistic what what do you call that shaman journey it's, work yeah it's a shamanic energy work or shamanic journey work yeah and yeah. the one that you did with me was called the soul transformation because we're doing it over a period of time so we're going in and finding your soul tribe animal and that really just shifts so many things but, yeah. yeah, it's shamanic energy work and shamanic journey work. Or it's just shamanic that, healing, I guess. Yeah. And and why the shamanic component? What does that mean exactly? Oh, what a journey that one's been too. <laughs> <laughs> so way back no, when We've only got 30 minutes. <laughs> way back when everything else was changing, I mm. also was coming into a shamanic path. So the, the people who were doing women's work, um, also had ties in with some Native American shamanic traditions. And so I actually became apprenticed to one of those shamanic traditions. And it, you know, coming from such a stale yang environment where I'd felt soul destroyed and then moving into, okay, I'm starting kahuna work, which isn't just learning how to massage. It's a whole philosophy around the aloha kahuna um, energy rites of passage transformational stuff so you know it's a whole new philosophy coming in and then at the same time there's this Native American traditions and teachings which were really deep and really powerful that were married with um, actual practical experiences you'd go and have so you'd go and do a night on the mountain of fear you'd spend the you'd spend a night on the mountain on your own doing ceremony or um, 
you know, night on the, in the hole in the ground. I had to dig my own hole, you know, and spend the night in the hole, like doing ceremony. Yeah, it was yeah. big yeah, stuff, it was like stuff, like vision like quest things. things. Yeah. So, you know, I, I did that for a long time and it definitely became a part of who I was. Unfortunately, that particular tradition I was with had, I don't know. It was a time when we were going from lots of freedom to all of a sudden there's got to be protocols and everyone's got to sign disclaimers and, you know, so it started to shift and change. And I wasn't allowed to share the things that I was learning even though I was embodying them and they were becoming part of who I was. So I found I had to suppress it or I was going to get in trouble. So for decades, you know, even though it's been my spiritual, it's been my medicine, the shamanic work is my medicine. It sparks me and it. And it gets me in touch with the spiritual life nothing else ever has. Yeah. Mm. It was just like this thing that I had to like, oh, no, not too many people can know about it. I'm going to get in trouble. And then I had the pleasure, the great pleasure of meeting a different shamanic teacher last year and doing some work with her. And it just opened everything up again to just be totally owning it, not worrying about, you know, the labels, what anyone else thinks about it, what anyone else wants to call it just yeah. reclaiming my medicine and it's yeah. just been incredible yeah. yeah for me and for other people too my daughter yeah. loves it oh my god yeah <laughs> well I love it I mean I was yeah. pretty tricked out and I got confirmation as you know as I told you I had a reading a couple of days later with um with a psychic who said um I can see a black panther um that's with you it's like attached to you and I went well I just had a shamanic healing and um, Shakina's Black Panther came into me or does a journey yeah. through yeah. me and is obviously still with me. So, that, you know, <laughs> I said, please tell your friend that, that this confirmation that um, was definitely, he was, he or she was definitely present with me and still, still kind of helping me on the journey. And, I, you know, I have to say a lot of things have transpired from that experience with you. So, um, and I'm booked in for another kahuna. This Friday, yes, you um, are. It just feels amazing. It's just it's 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 not just like a normal massage. It's actually a a, a, a spiritual experience, and I can't even articulate what it is. It's just things, you know. It's like a lot of the healings that I've experienced, I can't even put into words. It just it just changes. It, you just shift your perceptions and and what you're starting to attract in life and things like that. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been a practitioner for 14 years and I can still find it difficult to succinctly describe what kahuna is. Honestly, the easiest thing I I have, but it's still so vague that it doesn't really help people very much, is that it's not just a massage, it's an experience. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a spiritual experience. It's a full body experience. It's a pleasure, a nurturing, a nourishing experience. It's not just, yeah, it's not just an experience. And I guess that's why I call my work now rites of passage work you know it's transformation from within because I think even back when I was doing the you know the legal work and the um political stuff I was trying to transform things from the outside in and it was very frustrating I just just feels like you're hitting your head against a brick wall it's it's almost impossible and you know doing the kahuna work and the shamanic work and being pregnant and having all of those changes happening within my body caused mm. by someone else within me <laughs> yeah. really helped me understand that transformation comes from within and that I needed to focus on my part of the world and really um, trust in that butterfly effect. Mm. Yeah. So my, my podcast is interviewing courageous women. Where would you say you've had to be courageous? Oh, so many places. Mm. Honestly, the, the pregnancy birth, and single mothering, massive, like just mm. massively, massively courageous. Um, mm. And that's probably been one of the most life-changing. But then more recently is the cancer journey, as you know, that yeah. if you don't change with that, you probably will die from it. So <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a kick up the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So choose the change and transformation. And um, I've changed in so, so many ways with that. And I think with a your cancer journey is big or small, whether it's a little bit of cancer or a whole lot of cancer, um, the word cancer create can conjure up a whole lot of fear and it 
brings you face to face with your mortality. Yeah. So um, that is a really big thing. And and I yeah. guess, you know, being a single parent, I was really in survival mode for so many years. And then all of a sudden I was really in survival mode because I had cancer yeah. and I was trying to do all of the things natural and otherwise. And then I had to surrender to to the way that I hadn't wanted to, but then trust that that was perfect and that was the journey I needed to go on and, mm. and do all the emotional and spiritual soul searching because, you know, through all of the work that I've done, I know that it's not about what's out coming in. It's like how have I generated this within myself and really yeah. understanding my part in co-creating that experience yeah. so that I didn't have to continue the experience and could move on from there. So, you know, and that one's huge. That was just 2017. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, and I once I'd moved through it, I felt like I'd moved out of survival mode yeah. and could look at thriving, could look at the future again and plan for the future and be excited about the future as before I'd just mm-hmm. been going day to day. Like the big picture came back in. So there was a lot to be grateful for. And I know that you know how much there is to be grateful for when you go through these massive like mm. dark nights of the soul they're right yeah. they're passive experiences they you know you, you're you. in the unknown yeah they yeah. change you whether yeah. you want to be changed or not they change you and your choice is well how am I going to change and how am I co-creating instead of just being a victim of the experience how do I transform how do I become the butterfly mm. so yeah what would you say are your big challenges right now then Oh my god! <clears throat> you know what because you know they're equally yeah. relevant. Is the good stuff and how we get through and the positive yeah. and stuff is also relevant that we all struggle. I mean, the, the world yes. out there is pretty harsh, yeah. right? And we're all day to day. We have our shit, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what I'm yes, what I'm struggling with right now. There's a few little threads all fitting into the same thing. But what I can feel is that I feel like I'm a heart-centered person who who has medicine to share and that, you know, from the very beginning, from when I can very first remember, I felt like I'm here with a purpose. And the cancer journey showed me that I'm I am not the kind of person that can just do any job and be happy. Like I I do need to share my medicine. And my frustration comes from <sighs> I don't want to put excuses or labels on it, but feeling like I'm an introverted person. Sorry, I just got a low power mode thing on my phone, so I might have to just quickly yeah. plug in the nothing to see here. Yeah. Should be all good now. I'm not gonna edit that shit because I don't even know how to edit. Go on. It happened. We all know what it's like when our phone's going, ah, I'm about to run out. Yeah. yeah. So feeling like I am a very introverted, independent, solo person who's never needed to be surrounded by a lot of people and who's enjoyed the company of nature and animals sometimes more than humans because humans can be not so great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not good there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm a single mother trying to share my medicine, run a business, provide for my family, and to do so there's this part of me that feels like I have to be fake, um, buy into the whole um, constant social media presence, try to be a part of the popular group even though they don't resonate for me at all. And because I haven't been that and because I don't need that, like I don't, I don't need that validation from the outside. My validation comes from the inside. I mm-hmm. feel like it does a disservice to me. So I get frustrated with my own nature, my own character. I feel like it doesn't serve me in this lifetime for what I feel like I'm here to do. Mm. So, you know, and that's one that plays out through the years, but it's back up in my face again. You know, yeah. I'm putting my heart and soul into the work. Yeah. trying to reach people in a way that feels really authentic and keeps me in my own integrity. So not not pretending I'm something else, not yes. doing all the salesy, markety, pitchy things that, you know, we all can feel on a lower level, even if we want to buy into it on the superficial level. Yet mm. I want to be successful. I don't want to be struggling week to week to put food on the table for myself and my daughter. 
I want to yeah. show her that she can live her life following her passions and her purpose and not have mm. to make a choice between having a, a nice, comfortable uh, life with enough money or living your purpose. You know, it's, it's an age yeah. old thing. I know, I know it's an age old, you know, thousands of years, artists and visionaries and all those sorts of people have been having the same issue. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, here it is again. And so that's what's up for me right now. That's my biggest challenge is, is walking that line between medicine, purpose, integrity, authentic, authenticity and being heart-centred, soul-driven and uh, making a living. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if we want to talk about the, um, you know, manifesting whatever we want in the world, um, and staying in our lane and, and believing in ourselves. You know, I watched a really great, um, really inspiring video this morning, David Goggins, and he's talking. he was talking about pain and when we go through trials and tribulations, he just got really comfortable with the pain and comfortable yeah. and used to put himself through situations that were really grueling so he could build that resilience muscle and just keep going and just keep going and just keep going and I think that's the thing like I've seen with your journey knowing you it's just you do have that ability to just keep going you just keep going and we all have to just keep going I sometimes yeah. I've not wanted to keep going <laughs> perch and just go fuck this shit <laughs> let's end it all you know oh, yeah. just be so much more fun than these bollocks but you know it's yes. a truth that we struggle with in our own like you were yeah. saying i'm the same too i'm i i i've become more introvert as i've gotten older um but then i do too i have a voice and i need a message out there because i i have things to share too and um and we do need to put food on the table and life and all that sort of stuff so it is that like, yeah it is what it is isn't it <laughs> it is what it is and it just seems to keep coming back to trusting because you know I've had many bouts of quite severe depression throughout my life and it usually comes from when I get stuck in this physical mundane world of just like well if this is it uh next this isn't enough yeah. for me. This isn't satisfying. This isn't, uh, yeah. there's not enough here. I want more than this. And that's when I'm disconnected from spirit that I really go into those places. And I'm so um, pleased to say that that happens far less. And I go yes. uh, a lot less deep than I used to. I used to go way yes. down that rabbit hole and, and yes. just be like, it's just darkness. And now I'm like, oh, hang on. I think I'm standing at the top of the rabbit hole. What can I do for me now? And, you know, yeah. that's evolution and I'm proud of that. You know, that's been yeah. huge, those depressions. Well, when you can feel like checking out mm. is better than staying here, like that's big. Oh, it's happening a lot right now. Yeah. People checking out, actually doing it. Yeah. Um, which is which is hard yucky, you know. Um, I remember hearing this story, this, this guy who survived, I think he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and he actually survived it. And he wow. remembers as he was leaping, he remembers in flight, fuck, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know? and, and that's what he kind of goes around. I can't remember his name, but he goes around now talking to people, just yeah. don't do it because, you know, as we know in life, there's peaks and troughs and, the troughs yeah. are actually there for a purpose because we couldn't fucking get up there if we hadn't been down there. So it's all relevant, yeah. isn't it? Well, and it's what's that, yeah. in. And that's it. It's back to that rites of passage work where I work with the medicine wheel and go, you know, you break that wheel into three sections, you're preparing for the unknown, you're in it. Holy shit, yeah. you're in it. You're in the ordeal, you're in the initiation, you're in the unknown, you're in the underworld. But you're not a hero. You don't bring your medicine back until you come back to your tribe. You've got to finish off that journey. And I, yeah. and I, that's one of the things I tell myself now and it feels really crunchy is, oh, we're just in the underworld right now. We're just in the initiation where, where the messy, gooey part of the not caterpillar, not butterfly, where the, where the goo in the cocoon. Yeah. It's okay to be the gooey mess sometimes. Yeah. And they just keep going. You don't do it once. Luckily, butterflies yeah. and stuff, that's it. They do it once. <laughs> Yeah, we're constantly yeah. transforming as humans, as conscious humans who want to be awakened and evolved, and you know, helping raise the vibration on the planet. Those of us who really mindfully want to do that and be that, we're always doing the work, so we're always going to be transforming. We're always going to be going through the dark nights of the soul, the challenges, yeah. so we can come out, you know, yeah. with the embodied gifts and medicine. 
I love it. I've, I, I now love it because <laughs> because I, I, I know how much I grow from it. I just get, you know, I'm coming into my 49th year, wise woman, crone, and yeah. I just think, geez, I just, I just, I'm like a fine wine. I'm just getting better, you know. Absolutely. I just am getting better. Yeah. Talk to me briefly, you've got five minutes, about oh. the importance of having a tribe around you of supportive people. Yeah, well, you know, that was one of the things that the cancer journey showed me because, you know, being a Leo, independent, introverted woman, I was just so used to still being solo as a parent, still solo parenting. Mm. Um, it required a humbleness that I hadn't realised that I didn't have because I thought humbleness was weakness. So it required a humbleness when I was really going through the hardest parts of the cancer journey, the surgery and things like that, and couldn't actually physically couldn't do some things for myself. Mm. I had to ask for help. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah, yeah. right. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. deal with the feelings of, um, I guess, rejection that some people weren't there and didn't want to and were quite absent even in those those hardest periods. But, yeah. you know, the, the most beautiful thing, and I think most people who've been through a traumatic experience know that the people who were left, they're your tribe. They're oh, your hope. tribe. And yeah. you've got to be able to, like, again, I can only speak for women and not for all women, but as a woman having my own feminine experience is that mm. as a woman I need to be able to talk to other people who aren't judging me, who I can you know, uncensored, I can vent, I can rant, I can rage, I can cry, I can have all of the emotions being held in a really safe space. And so while my tribe might not be massive, it is solid. Yeah. And that means more to me than yeah. anything else. All yeah. about the, you know, one hand thing because uh, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. think, that, yeah, you know the important people and for me as well, um, the journey of cancer and other experiences, trauma that I've been through, it's been the ones that have stuck by me yeah. that are my gold, you know, and there's not many. Um, and no. it's totally cool because, you know, as you know too, there's so much growth we go through in that, in that cancer in particular. I was like a fish. Um, and you do leave people behind because you're just yes. transforming so rapidly because you have to because your life depends on it. Yes, yes old situations just can't stay anymore and it's okay. I used to break my heart, all the people that have gone out of my life, but now I have this radical acceptance for it now, which is such a beautiful place to be, see it for what it was and the beauty that they served at that time and now it's, I'm in a new, I'm in a new chapter, I'm in a new phase as you are as well. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, it can be hard, especially when you don't have a whole lot of tribe to start with and then you're losing some. It's like, well, hang on, I can't afford to lose any. <laughs> but, <I know. laughs> but, but more okay. calm, more calm and look at what yeah, we're they doing. Do. To, you know, look at what we're looking at collaborating yeah. and working with, you know, mm -hmm. the whole oneness tribe. Like tribe's going to grow from there, but it's going to grow in a really authentic, heart-centred way and that's just, that's the best way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. I've loved this chat with you, my love. Me it's just too. been really beautiful and you're just a force and you're so articulate and you express yourself so well. And, you know, I can say that because I've seen your growth. I've seen what you've gone through in your life. I've known you for, I don't know, seven years or something now, but it's just been, a as you've seen with me, so it's nice to reflect and see where we are now. I feel like we've grown up a little bit. <laughs> oh, maybe, just a little bit. Some, don't some tell time. anybody. No. <laughs> Be very stupid too, which is good. Um, yes. So, thank you so much. I'll see you Friday Pleasure. for my massage. And uh, yes, yes, I love you dearly, and thank you so much for coming on to this little chat. Thanks Mwah. for having me, beautiful woman. I love your work. Keep Thanks, darling. It. Yeah. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.